After being gone for nearly a month, you'd think that this whole Doki Bird situation would have blown over by now and there would at the very least, if not blowing over, would have stopped producing revelation after revelation. Now I don't have the time or energy to cover all of the shit I missed while I was on hiatus, however, as soon as I come back, there's fresh news for me to disclose. So let's get right back into the news like nothing ever happened. It feels good to be back, guys. So as of yesterday, as of recording, apparently somebody released a document that is effectively a hit list of everyone who's ever said something negative about Niji Sanji or supported Doki Bird. Now they got exposed and deleted this quote unquote hit list, but things are hard to delete from the internet. Don't forget what they tried to do, says the original poster, Skuma. And so yeah, this has all been archived, so let's take a look at this archive. And of course, the very first person on this list is Kyo. I hate Niji Sanji. Couldn't agree more. And so, naturally, he's at the very top of this list. And of course, he's up there with False ID, Moist Critical, Mudahar, Asmongold, Hirohei, Coefficient, Evanito, Kenji, and a couple other people that I'm not familiar with. I've never heard of uh, Dreamy Chew, and I've never heard of Tectone. They're not in my circle. But yeah, all these other names I immediately recognize, and yes, they've all made videos about this topic, as they should have. They also made a list of all of the artists that have either spoken out against the treatment of Doki Bird and or dropped Niji Sanji merch from their websites, and this is a very long list. Then they go into discussing all of the indies and other corpos that have spoken out against Niji Sanji, including Sayu, who, if you remember, made a video where he effectively dodged a bullet by not joining Niji Sanji because they wanted him to drop his voice acting gig. Also, can I just say I love how memes that people have been made have gotten people onto this hit list? You know, don't get me wrong, I fully understand why. It's just so funny that someone is so angry and so bent out of shape about memes. This is my favorite part of the document because I don't know who these people are, but they have followers, so I'm gonna mention them. And <laughs> it's just such a low bar. <laughs> and look, these they, they haven't even done anything, you know, quote unquote heinous. They, these people have just made memes. In parentheses next to all these people, it's just memes. I wonder if I'm on here. I did a quick search and I found out that I am not on this list, which I have to say, slightly offensive because I have been a professional Niji Sanji hater for the better part of a year. I want my recognition, goddammit. <laughs> Now this whole document is meant to be like this sort of like hit list or like they say that these are all people that you should block. And I only just now noticed this while parsing through this document, but the very first person they tell you to block actually isn't Kyo, it's Flipsy, and the link that they provide to justify why you should block them, it's literally just a meme. <laughs> I don't know why this meme in particular has this hit list writer so up in arms, but I just find it hilarious that their evidence for why you should block them is just one of countless memes. And also reacting to this document is a actual lawyer who goes by the channel name Legal Mindset who went over this and he pointed out something that I missed when I was combing through this document on my own and that's just how low the bar is for ending up on this hit list. Uh, Panoni dropped Niji merch, uh, Kirichan merch, strong moist NSFW artists so careful they're not against Niji 100%. Wait why careful? Maybe because you don't I'm going to be careful opening them, I guess. They're not against Niji 100%. So they said what Niji official did is good, but they have a Doki PFP. So take it as you will. So yeah, I completely missed that while coming through the document. Literally, all you have to do to end up on this document is have a Doki profile picture. <laughs> it's such a low bar. Also, this guy has been absolutely blowing up lately. Like, if you look at his channel, he was getting like... 2k, 3k, 6k views, and as soon as he started covering this whole, like, Niji Sanji debacle, 163k, 116k, like, his views have skyrocketed. And because he's actually a lawyer, a lot of his takes are actually really interesting. And it's nice to have someone with a legal background basically confirm everything we've already been speculating about Niji Sanji and how bad it is. I mean, if we have a literal, actual lawyer completely debunking Niji Sanji's legal defense, you know it's game over for Niji Sanji. <laughs> 
But as much as I am tempted to milk this Selen Tatsuki drama for everything it's worth and gain as much clout as possible, to be honest, I'm pretty over this controversy. And I really want to get on to more interesting and prescient news. So let's actually hard pivot away from this old drama that for some reason keeps on dramaing and focus on something new. And rather than focusing on the negative like I tend to do on this channel, no no no, let's focus on something positive. In case you missed it, Nanashi Mume just made 4 million yen in 60 seconds. You see, Mume opened commissions. For $50, you could commission Mume to redraw your profile picture on stream. Let's see how that went, shall we? Next thing, Super Chats will only be open for a really short period of time. Probably like a minute, maybe two minutes. I don't know yet, uh, but very short amount of time and that'll be it and it'll probably be enough to cover a few streams so uh if you want something make sure you have it prepared i will again i will give you a heads up when it opens it says super chat on there we go i don't want to look i'm not gonna look right now close the gates they're closed the gates are closed Yo, that is pretty fucking hype. 4 million yen, about $27,000 in literally 60 seconds. Holy shit. That is crazy. And I imagine everyone who does art and is scrambling to scrape together a single commission is probably just so jealous right now. And I can't blame you. <laughs> I would be too. God. For context, she made $27,000 US. I make $23,000 a year. That's what I live on. She made what I live on literally in a single minute. Craziness. And you know, part of me is incredibly jealous of her success, but also how can I be mad at Mume? She's adorable and she deserves nothing but success. As much as I enjoy talking about the downfalls and the corpo corruption and the graduations and the terminations. It's nice to just celebrate some W's and this is a pretty fat fucking W lads. The next thing that I want to talk about is Quinn Bennett, who I feel like it's a pretty open secret at this point. I don't think anyone's going to flame me for disclosing this. He is the voice behind Niji Sanji's former talent Kyo Kaneko. And as you can see, he is clearly teasing a rebrand as a VTuber. And as you can see here, Matra Khan saying anime as fuck, to which he replies, so I don't know if you know, but it's actually this newfangled thing called a VTuber. A VTuber? Man, I've never heard of that. Man, I hope they're cool. And funnily enough, they've also gotten responses from Zentreya of Vishoujo. Coincidence? Probably. He's probably not joining Vishoujo. But a man can dream, can't he? Now for this next segment, I'm going to admit I don't know much about V Reverie, but I do know that three of their talents are graduating all at once. On the 16th, 23rd, and 24th of March, they've got three people leaving. So let's head on over and see how many talents they actually even have. How big of a blow is that to the company? So if you take a look, they have debuted nine talents, four of which have already retired, and now Lyria, Rana, and Akiko are all graduating as well. That's literally just leaving Nova and Salmon. That's basically everybody. V Reverie better pull a Niji Sanji and start debuting talents real quick because I don't think you can be much of an agency with only two talents. Damn. Small corpos are just collapsing left and right in this industry. God damn. And I know that's more bad news and I don't want to dwell on the bad news. So let me go ahead and reset the tone of this channel a little bit. Let me bring up your spirits or bring down your spirits depending on your attitude and allow me to present you with coefficient cosplaying as Fuwamoko. This isn't news, I just find it hilarious and I wanted to share it with you. No me llamo, mi nombre no es Fuwawa, me llamo Mokoko. <laughs> Announcing himself as Mokoko in Spanish, 10 out of 10, made my day. It's so goofy, I love it. <laughs> Coefficient is a legend, and also, by the way, Coefficient, one of the people mentioned in the Niji Sanji hit list. So if you haven't already heard of Coefficient, go check him out. His content is hilarious. 
But you know, all this news, good, bad, and otherwise, I feel like is a distraction, perhaps even a psyop. I think that this is all part of some greater conspiracy. What conspiracy is that, my friends? I think all of this VTuber news is a conspiracy to make you forget Usada Pekora bought a fucking monkey. I feel like we have entirely forgotten about this monkey and I cannot get this monkey out of my head. <laughs> How can you legally buy a monkey? How is she allowed to do that? Never forget that Pecora bought a fucking monkey. So I will end the video on a positive note with this quote from Coefficient. Every time something bad happens in the world, I think of this monkey and I forget everything. Thank you fucking monkey. Goodbye guys. It feels good to be back in the news cycle. More videos coming soon.